Hello and welcome to this video on fugacity. At the end of this video you will be able to explain, uh, to define fugacity and explain why it is useful and define the fugacity coefficient and explain the expected values for the fugacity coefficient at low, moderate and high pressure. Now, uh, from the previous lecture, uh, we were looking at uh, the criteria for phase equilibrium. So uh, when we've got phase equilibrium, we've got things at equal uh, temperature and pressure, uh, but we've also got uh, equal Gibbs free energy between our two phases. So in this case, we're looking at uh, the gas phase and the liquid phase as the phases that we have in equilibrium. We could also be looking at liquid and solid phases, but uh, we're just going to be looking at liquid and gas phases here. Now, instead of just looking at Gibbs free energy, we can break this down into uh, ideal gas contributions to the Gibbs free energy and departure contributions to the Gibbs free energy. Okay, so for the gas and for the liquid. Now, since the gas and the liquid are at the same temperature and pressure, then we would expect that the ideal gas contribution to the Gibbs free energy for the two uh, phases to be the same. So if this is true and this is true, then it follows that the departure Gibbs free energy of the gas phase and of the liquid phase must be equal as well. Now this is a more useful uh, relationship for us to be able to use with equations of state and we'll, we'll see why that is in the next couple of slides. So an issue with the departure Gibbs free energy is that it's not completely apparent what the magnitude of this should be, whether it should be one, a thousand or a million joules per mole. Now partly to address the this but also partly because it helps with the uh, the modeling of phase and chemical equilibrium. Um, G.N. Lewis uh, along with many of his other great ideas uh, proposed a quantity called fugacity and so what the fugacity is equal to is the pressure times by this collection of terms here which includes the departure Gibbs free energy. Now it may not be be completely apparent uh, why this is useful straight up but we'll, we'll go through that in the next couple of slides. Now the, the first thing we look at is how we break the Gibbs free energy down into the uh, ideal gas parts and then the departure parts. Now from the previous work we've done we know that the difference in Gibbs free energy between uh, one pressure and another pressure uh, at the same temperature can be quantified as RT times by the log of uh, P2 on P1. Okay. Then if we have a look at the departure part of this and we incorporate in the definition of uh, fugacity uh, which incorporates the departure Gibbs free energy then uh, the departure Gibbs free energy, the difference between that between two pressures is the ratio of uh, uh, P1 over P2 but also then the fugacity 2 over fugacity 1. Now if we substitute these two equations in, okay, so uh, we've got the ideal gas uh, contribution here to the difference between Gibbs free energies and then we've got the uh, departure contribution here then we can combine these two terms and we get this equation over the right hand side and so we get that these cancel out and what we're left with is that the Gibbs free energy then, or the difference in Gibbs free energy between two states is equal to RT times by the log of the ratio of fugacities. Now this is extremely important for a range of phase and, and chemical equilibrium stuff, so particularly chemical equilibrium. Now on the previous slide we saw that we uh, recalled that the Gibbs free energy difference for an ideal gas is this RT and then the ratio of pressures. 
and so we see that the relationship is almost exactly the same here um, but now it's just the ratio of fugacities and so we can therefore think of uh, fugacities as sort of like a corrected pressure so that it's similar to uh, to pressure so it has the same units as pressure and in the case of an ideal gas that fugacity is equal to pressure okay that's a very important relationship for us as well now we can relate the fugacity to the pressure uh, by using something called the fugacity coefficient and so if we rearrange this and use the previous relationship that we had we see that the fugacity coefficient is equal to uh, this collection of terms uh, which includes the departure Gibbs free energy now if we want to be able to calculate this uh, or calculate this uh, the uh, the fugacity uh, and so therefore calculate the fugacity coefficient uh, we need to know how to calculate this G departure term and so thankfully we've done a lot of work previously that helps us do this so if I'm interested in calculating departure Gibbs free energy then I start with the definition of uh, Gibbs free energy and so therefore I can also say that the departure Gibbs free energy uh, is equal to the uh, departure enthalpy minus T times by the departure entropy and so from our earlier work okay where a, we, we already know how to calculate H departure uh, we already know how to calculate S departure and so we can substitute those two things up into, oh sorry that one goes up here, up into these two equations. And so when we substitute those two things in, then we get this uh, very large equation uh, here for Gibbs departure. But we can see that there are a range of things that we're able to cancel out. So these two terms here cancel out and then we're left with this term here and then using the definition of the fugacity coefficient then we're left with a, a relatively simple equation for calculating the fugacity coefficient okay, where uh, RT on V, so the V here is a variable that we have to integrate with respect to and the pressure here is um, an equation from the equation of state okay and then once we know the volumes that we're integrating with respect to then we're able to calculate the Z's here okay so so this is very very similar to the equations we've been using to calculate enthalpy departure and entropy departure now before we get started in the calculations it's good to know what we should expect in terms of uh, this fugacity coefficient okay so what sort of numbers should we be expecting and so to, to illustrate this I can grab a, um, a, a fugacity coefficient chart from uh, from one of our references and what we see is is so here's a fugacity coefficient value equal to one and we see that generally speaking the fugacity is less than one okay until we get to this very high pressure region here of uh, 20 or uh, many times more than the reduced uh, than the critical pressure then we can start getting fugacity coefficients greater than one okay and so this chart here uh, is is very analogous to um, to the compressibility chart where we expect compressibility to be generally less than one until we get into these very high pressure regions over here okay so so when we're doing these calculations so if you're in a moderate pressure you should be expecting to get a fugacity coefficient uh, somewhat less than one okay so to recap what we've got here is we've defined the fugacity coefficient F 
um, and we've defined that to replace the use of the departure Gibbs free energy and phase equilibria calculations because the departure Gibbs free energy we're not very sure of the magnitude and fugacity is in pascals and we know it should be somewhere in the ballpark of the pressure that we're interested in. So it's a corrected pressure with the same units as pressure, okay, so pascals, megapascals, all that sort of thing. For an ideal gas, fugacity is equal to pressure. Okay, so that's a very important relationship and we'll be using that a lot. And for real gases, as you move away from ideal behaviour, we generally expect that the fugacity will be less than pressure, okay, except at when we go to uh, very high pressure and relatively high temperatures. Okay, that's all for today. Thanks for your attention.